Hello, welcome back to the School Days campaign. It's been a minute because 2020 and the holidays. I uh, hope everyone watching, if you celebrated it, I hope you had an awesome Thanksgiving. Uh, if you didn't, I hope you've had a great time since the last time we saw you here. Uh, I am Matt. I am the GM for this game, and I am excited to uh, get back together with all of our awesome super teams uh we're gonna start our introductions today with wait did we lose something yeah uh with cat hello cat you're muted Yeah, that's cool. I know how to there do we go. that. Um, <laughs> you know, I just do jumping jacks to uh, successfully on. Am I sideways now? I guess I'm just going to be sideways for the day. All right. Um, <laughs> um, hi, I'm Kat. I'm sideways. I play IDK. Um, oh, I totally missed it. I was going to to make a joke about how long it's been since we, we've met and um, then ask what, what the name of my, my uh, character's name is again. And then somebody would say IDK and I'd be like, how do you, how would I know if you don't know? Um, so that's my introduction. I'm glad that, to be here. That was a good bit. I, I appreciate the bit. Uh gonna hop over to stace hello stace we're just gonna bounce around today why not hey i'm into it i would i would make a joke but i'm not funny so i'm just gonna say that my name is stace stace windu around the internet excited to be here for those who have forgotten i play hacktivist a moody technologically capable teenager so uh and her powers are to control machines and some electrokinesis excited to get back into it awesome awesome Mr. Parr, how are you doing today? Oh, hi. Uh, doing pretty well. It's been a while since uh, I've seen all these faces. Yeah. Back in. I am playing the uh, ever, ever charismatic, despite what my labels might say, ever charismatic Wrath. Raphael Jaclana, a.k.a. Wrath the One. Brand new hero using the doomed playbook from masks very cool very cool and we'll drop down to leland how you doing i'm doing great uh hey everyone i'm leland slash leopold adjust uh, find me on the internet at leopold adjust most places as seen on the overlay uh, anyway uh i'm excited to jump back in obviously uh great group uh and i am playing um uh, hell is my character's name it's been so long <laughs> stone strike <laughs> my bad <clears throat> anyway i'm playing stone strike which is uh, an angsty metalhead uh, teenager who is mostly a uh, an earth elemental so that's that's going on for him but um <laughs> yeah let's oh. do it very very cool uh we will introduce our last player of the night when she gets back here that's nikki uh playing star we'll let her do her intro when she gets back in uh unfortunately we don't have uh aram Knox. we don't have She's him back. with us today uh but he should be back for uh, the last two episodes of the season here in the next two weeks uh nikki how are you doing today? Doing fine. Welcome back. And who are Thank you, you playing? Remind remind us who your character is. Character is Star. She's a um a dance student who is the Janice playbook. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Let's do a quick recap because it has been a minute since we last played. Uh, 2020 continues to 2020 all over everything in its very rude way. Um, so last time was the dream episode. 
where all of y'all were stuck in a dream of a world without superpowers. And just to recount some things that were um, not going to say uh, relevant or important or going to decide the rest of this campaign at all, um, but IDK managed to wake themselves up. Aram woke himself up. Star chose to stay asleep to make sure all of her friends were out of the dream. And Margot chose to stay asleep for herself. Uh, there's also a couple other things that were interesting that might come up a little bit later. Uh, IDK did force Margot to wake up and learn some information in the process. And uh, Star pushed Raph out of her mind so that she could stay asleep. The current situation is that uh, all that group of heroes is on top of a building while this magic sleep fog keeps everyone else in Eon City in a dream uh star is still asleep but is up there with them and stone strike philip hasn't been seen since the fight he vanished in the middle of it uh but we're going to answer that question right now as we zoom across the city from this rooftop out to this massive tree that has grown out of harper bay the bay that the city is built on. We're going to keep zooming in through branches and everything to a throne room where Philip is currently standing. Last thing you remember, Stone Strike, was a pretty big fight against uh, just all sorts of random villains. And then this massive green cloud came boiling down the street. All of your friends were dropped unconscious. All the major superheroes were dropped unconscious. And you, you, you kind of started falling asleep, but it was kind of like one of those, if you're in the middle of class, if you remember back to whenever high school was, and you're in the middle of the class and you're nodding off and you do that, huh, and you wake yourself up as your head is, Head is dropping. It's one of those numbers. And you find yourself in this throne room. No one else is around. Just you. No doors. No windows. Big old throne made out of wood. And a uh, kind of a raised basin full of water. Uh, I would like to um, determine if I'm dreaming or not by like poking myself with one of the large one of the uh, crystalline structures on my the stone part of my arm I'm just going to kind of like like jab myself and my fleshy arm with it and see if it hurts yeah hurts okay yeah won't do that again pokey uh, uh, um uh, hacktivist uh Star WTF <laughs> and also what the fuck is going on? Language Philip. What what? And walking out behind you, uh if the camera was looking at Philip, you're standing in the middle of a big round room in a tree trunk, and literally from behind you came nightshade all right yep i remember that person oh uh yeah like you you could have asked me for my number or something the last time we talked if you wanted to just see me at random you know scooping me up like that's kind of kind of rude i I don't want i don't want to be rude to say that but oh i'm i'm sorry i thought that we had an understanding. You took the rune stone. You used it. You seemed happy. Yeah, I got rid of that thing, though. I, I don't. Philip, do you, you always you know, throw away it... gifts? No, but you know, sometimes I regift them, and I just re- I just regave it to the earth. You know. Oh, that's very sweet, but uh. 
gift given is not so easily thrown away. She like reaches over and like taps your rock arm. Whoa, says, hey. You should know that better than most. Yeah, don't you don't have to go around touching me, lady. Like listen, I've I've got a group of friends, you know, and they're probably looking for me. So I should probably get out of here before they get here and try and fight you or something. Cause you so far have been pretty chill to me. So I mean you kind of shot down that plane with a freaking earth rocket or some crazy nonsense like that. I'm, no offense. She just kind of shakes her head and she walks past the the basin of water, waves a hand over it, and then walks up to her throne and seats herself very regally on it and just says, if you want to see your friends, all you have to do is look. Where am I looking? In the water basin. It's, it's, a- it's magic. Oh, yeah, okay. It lets you see things. All you have to do is walk up, look in, say a name, and we'll see what we see. All right. Um, I'm going to hesitantly uh, approach the the water source, uh, looking all around, uh, making sure no none of the elements are creeping in on me um, as I'm approaching. Um, uh trying to pay close attention to her body language for anything hostile as well um and then uh then i'll peer in eventually once i realize i'm just sitting here in silence and paranoia (laughs) okay uh you're looking in it's a wooden basin looks like it's a natural part of the tree like everything else in here somehow Uh um what do you, do you say a name or are you just going to keep looking and see if anything happens or yeah um hold on i have a damn character sheet i know how to i have a connection with hacktivist's character right uh let me double check anyway um i'll just say uh uh what the hell's your real name i'm having trouble saying on uh, pin bloop Marco. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, do I know your last name? Uh, Stace? Your character's Dupree? last name? Dupree. Okay, Margo. Uh, Margo uh, Dupree? And I just like hesitantly say the name into the pool. There's a ripple in the water, and we're going to flash over <laughs> to Margo. Now, Margo, we talked at the end of last session to all of y'all, except for except for Philip, uh, about what your character's particular nightmare was, because all of you except Star may have escaped the dream, but no one escapes their nightmares. And the nightmare you told me about was that you were going to be stuck in an impossible situation and forced to use your electrokinesis. So, the the image that Philip sees, what uh, what sort of impossible situation would Margot consider a nightmare? I would say facing off against either her own mother or her mother's people, yeah, and, and being outnumbered with her friends in danger. Okay. So uh, we're going to cut to a high-rise building. Uh, The image flickers to a high-rise building in Eon City. Uh, And inside, a fight is going down. All of these super teams, all of our heroes are in there fighting against the typical superhero swarm of uh, like dark visored, stormtrooper looking dudes robots none of them have guns that shoot bullets because this is clearly a superhero world from like a 90s cartoon so everyone's shooting lasers somehow we're just not going to worry about it really it's it's a dream it's fine um we watch the fight progress things seem to be fine y'all are moving up through levels everything seems to be going good y'all get into an elevator and it's rising up to the top 
and you're the one who's controlling this, Margo. And a second too late, you see the trap hit. The floor drops out from under all six of y'all, and y'all are all dropping down into individual, like, glass chambers in a room, except for you. You are just in an open part of the room. Now, all of your friends have access to these little rooms, and guards start to appear in them, and they're having to fight off these guards. And your mother's voice comes over the intercom and just says, it's time to choose, honey. Destiny or your silly little friends. Either way, you're going to have to open one of the two computers with your your gifts that you're so uneager to use. The gifts I gave you. Ooh, okay. So in this situation, the computers, um, I would imagine, are unpowered because Margaret's pretty good at controlling machines, so she's going to have to power these computers. Yep. Okay. So... um, and I just want to make sure, like, this is the point where I, I'm controlling Margo, like, in mm-hmm. the scene. Okay. So, um, two computers. Is it clear what they're intended to do? Nope. Okay. Um, so, what she'll do is she'll well, walk over to one of the computers and reach out and touch it and attempt to... give it power and power and power it on using her electrokinesis. Okay. Uh, that feels like a roll. It does. And I don't know. Hmm. Let's take a look here at our handy dandy guide. That's this probably isn't directly engaging a threat, probably an unleash your powers. You think I would say, especially considering the reluctance to do this at, at any level, right. even if this isn't a very big thing. All right. Uh, so Roll plus freak. Who? Okay. What? what? Okay. <laughs> so, womp, womp, womp. That's a miss. A six is a miss. Uh, just barely a miss, but this is a nightmare. So it kind of makes sense a little bit. Yeah. What's going to happen though, is the other computer powers on and it seems to have a program running the program is something to do with the kind of thing that is deployed into the cells after every time one of them gets beaten a new one pops in and a message pops up system tampering detected incrementing danger And you see like the rotating icon of just the normal guard that y'all have been beating up change. And now it's just like a different color that y'all had noticed was like the elite version of this. Because we're using video game superhero logic now. Because why not? (laughs) And your mother's voice comes over and she goes, oh, you didn't think it was going to be easy, right? You getting away from all this? You can just use that other computer and you can turn that danger all the way up, Margo. Up? No, but um, shut up, mom. And uh, But Margo is going to fall back on her security blanket and run over to the computer that is on and try <laughs> to change things from there. All right. Uh, roll, that, roll that again. Roll, roll unleash your powers again. While I'm watching this, while I'm watching this, I'm like, her mom is the worst. (laughs) Philip, that's rude. Miss St. Vincent is doing a wonderful job. And just because you don't see the glory of this plan yet, doesn't mean you should speak ill of them. I I was just saying she's the worst. I didn't didn't speak that much ill. Let me keep watching this. This is pretty cool. She's a very talented individual, yes. And we're going to cut back into Margot. Yeah, you hit this time. It's a partial success. So I'm going to have to get you to mark a condition for me. 
Hmm. Boy, I'm stuck in between like angry, hopeless, and insecure. I'm gonna say angry. Angry is great for this situation. So you uh, you are able to get into the system of the computer. It seems like this entire computer's purpose, its one goal in life is to keep putting bad guys into the cells with your friends in order to eventually make them lose. Or to make you realize that you can't really get out of this one the way you normally would. But you did get into it. So you're going to be able to... You're going to be able to do a couple of things. You've got a few options, and you're kind of your, your sense is you can use it once. Each one you can only use once. So there's a pause where it will just kind of turn off anyone else showing up in the cells for a little bit, lower the danger, or reset. You get one each. And reset means? Doesn't say. Ooh. Pause. Okay. The guards all vanish, and all of your friends are going to get a little bit of a breather in your nightmare. Okay. So, um, yeah, feeling pretty good about just using using her, her hacking skills to, to influence the situation. So she's going to. Just keep going on this computer until something goes bad. Okay. We're going to use some dream logic here behind this. Um, okay. So eventually you're able to dig through this computer and everything that you get on this computer, on the one that's on, tells you that it is not the one you want. It controls these cells and that's it. And kind of what you're able to glean as looking through all the code, everything is your mom's whole goal here was wear everyone down until they aren't fighting me anymore. All right. So now she is going to, let's see, she's angry. It's paused. So there's nothing around. Um, she's going to attempt to destroy this terminal. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Um, Sweet. Wow. I hold on. I need to look at something real fast with your character. Yeah. Uh, you are playing the scion, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Do I? What can my moves do for me? I would, I would like you very, very much to look at your moment of truth. Oh. Oh, hang on. I got to pull that up. So, yeah. Um, moment of truth is people have always tried to define you by your lineage as if from the moment you were born, you were meant to be some villain to be defeated. But they're right, aren't they? The darkness is in you. So right here, right now, you're not fighting it. You're embracing it. Both hero and villain and greater besides. You're overcoming impossible odds in ways no hero would approve of and no villain could comprehend. Of course, after seeing what you can really do when you embrace the whole of yourself, the rest of the world isn't going to forget who you really are. So I want you to just keep that in your back pocket. That there might come a moment here very soon where Margot needs to start making some choices. <laughs> and uh, we're going to actually let that dream just cook for a little bit. We're going to come back to that. Uh, Philip, the vision in the basin that you're looking at fades. And Nightshade, just sitting back, just goes, that's very interesting. Yeah. What, like, this pool thing? Is this the first time you've seen it? Philip, dear, I made that. 
Oh, but you said that was interesting. I thought that's what you were talking. Oh, you're talking about the contents of what we saw. Got it. Yeah, no, that was, yeah, that was cool. All of it was cool. Uh, I, she's such a badass. <sighs> I just well, how did she yell so if she confident. holds up in a nightmare? She's just so, like, confident in being a badass. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm a badass, too, you know. You I feel like I have are. a lot to learn from her, you know? Well, pick and choose the lessons, dear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, what about the rest of my friends, though? Um, Say a name and let's see what's going on. Okay. All right. Uh, ooh. I bet Star's doing something cool. What's Star doing? All right, we're going to cut over the uh, the image that you're seeing in this one, Philip. Is when when you were looking at when you when you saw the vision of Margot's nightmare, it was crystal clear image. You could see everything. Like the camera was real tight, like a 4K camera, right at her, looking at all the details. It was great. This looks like a 1970s camcorder. There's like film grains happening and nice. your, your vision like travels under a gateway that you remember. It was the one at Camp Golden Oak, but it's like the sign is all kind of rotten and un, unkempt. It's nighttime. There's fog on the ground. And as your camera swoops in under that sign and starts moving through the campground, you hear this <laughs> behind you. And this this all this like living shadow, all black shape, just like this massive thing, just like steps in front of the camera. It's got like this big old piece of just metal in its hand. And you see this 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 title screen flip down that just says Camp Black Hole. All right, yeah. And this, then Star comes running out of the woods. <laughs> Nikki, your nightmare sequence that you told me Star was gonna be trapped in at the end of last session. Uh was a slasher movie in a camp with a killer named Black Hole. And I hope this is living up to the terror you were imagining for your wonderful superhero. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Good. Uh, so you're in a slasher film. What are you going to do? <laughs> I'm running. Um, Usually in the slasher films, when you're running, you don't actually go anywhere. Right. <laughs> so I'm basically running and like up a tree and then I jump out of the tree and I am like right where I see the monster, the black hole. Mm -hmm. And um, probably slow motion running, <laughs> trying to run away and falling. Oh, tripping on every single yes. branch in the forest. It's bad. Yeah, and I've got the 70s um, hair and <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> like like Jackie Brown kind of? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Excellent. She's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Star, what are you going to do? How are, you, are, you are being hunted. And I'm controlling the dream, kind of. A little bit. I, th I think because you were still dreaming, but you knew it was a dream, you are aware that this is still a dream world, but it is a very different one. So probably for you, it's going to be figuring out what kind of a dream this is, and then you'll be able to assert a little bit of control over it. Okay. Um, since I think I'm dreaming, I'm going to try to find a, a shed with a web with like tools in it 
Is there a shed that I can run into? Uh, let's have you do an assess the situation real fast. Uh, so I'm going to get you to roll plus superior. One second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is a shed. That was a miss on the roll. Uh, but there is a shed. Uh, you you run, you run over to this shed, tripping on every single branch between you and it. Uh, you can still hear this this lumbering thing moving behind you. Um. The shed is locked, but you start like pulling at it and like part of it's breaking off. You can get in. uh, But what you didn't notice was a couple of your friends were trying to sneak up on it on the monster. And so out of nowhere, uh, Wrath the One, Stone Strike, IDK, they all like swing in and start like trying to fight down Black Hole while you're getting the shed open. And Star, I hate to say it, it's a slasher film. You need to get into this shed before your friends start getting slashed. Um, and like kicking it and hitting it's not doing anything. It's rocking it a little bit. You, um, you feel like you just need like you need you need something. You need a crowbar, a good branch. I, man, if only you had tripped over something, maybe you could use to try to wrench it open. Just literally anything, really, whatever you can find. She's, you got to get a little bit of leverage on this door. She's looking on the ground and, and yelling at her friends to run from the singularity. She's <laughs> 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 like, the singularity is going to get you. Run. <laughs> I'm already past the event horizon. <laughs> I don't want to no. get spaghettified. No, no, you guys gotta go. I'm already pet. No, I won't do the whole thing. <laughs> no. I like spaghetti. So you you you're looking around, you find a stick on the ground, you shove it in the door, you start like wrenching at it, and eventually like the whole little lock clasp just breaks off because this every bit of wood in this camp is rotten anyway so it all just rips off the door falls off its hinges and there is a shed full of all the rusty gardening tools of all varieties is there a what chainsaw? what's up is there a chainsaw <laughs> a <laughs> mint condition ready to go chainsaw yeah, i'm grabbing a chainsaw uh, and revving it up yes. This you, just turned into you, Evil Dead. I love it. You rev this thing up. You turn around just in time to see Wrath and Leopold are like... Philip. Oh, sorry. Stone Strike. Yes. I need to fix my fix my Zoom. I'll no, fix you're it. fine. You're good. That was that was me. Um, you see, you see Stone Strike and Wrath the, Wrath the One. Basically, like the the killer like shoves him up against the building and then puts his metal rod stick of metal just through them both, and then turns to you and you have a chainsaw. What are you gonna do? I'm going to have the chain hold the chainsaw up, and I cannot think of anything witty to say, <laughs> so it's gonna be like. You don't send my friends into black holes, and then I'm gonna try to like slash at the dude with my chainsaw. Okay, uh, roll unleash your powers for me. Okay. <laughs> I just keep losing my sheet. That's why it takes me a second. If you there could see my desktop right now, you would know I fully understand. I have so many windows open. Oh yeah, that's how it is when I'm running Swihander. It's and it's gonna be even worse with a streaming game. I feel like eventually. They said unleash your. Uh, yeah, so that's plus freak. Where is that? Uh, uh just uh, stats. Yeah, just look under uh, stats on freak. Sorry. Wait. Okay, oh, I see it now. Yeah, yeah. There you go. This is not going to be good. 
It's like a minus one in this. It could still be very good, though. Okay. <laughs> that, okay. I'm actually going to use a GM power because I want something cool to happen here. Um, so I'm using one of my GM points that I've gotten from this game uh, uh, to make, to change that result. Uh, and we're going to get back to what that result is in a minute. Uh, I will let you know what that result is in our in a chat real fast here, Star, so you can prepare. Uh, but I want to change that result. Um, so thank you to our our uh, our watchers and retweeters for giving me the power to intrude like this in a really cool way. Thank y'all, uh, Philip. The last thing that you're seeing is Star running at a slasher movie villain with a revved up chainsaw, and the scene fades away. And oh, Nightshade God, is just so like, metal. she's sitting forward on the throne, just going like, what? That's, anyways, I'm sure she's fine. You don't need to worry about that at all. Could you explain to me, like, what's going on? Are they just dreaming somewhere or? Oh, oh no, they were dreaming a moment ago. These are more nightmares let's say okay it's kind of the same thing but i guess oh no we can... no no dear uh, in the dream they had a choice to wake up or not they could live a happy wonderful peaceful life as normal kids with with loving families without any of the pain of of being these these so-called heroes that society just demands so much from them. Do you want to know a secret, Philip? What? No. Yeah, I guess you're going to tell it to me anyway, probably, right? Some of them chose to stay asleep. Yeah, I probably would have done the same thing, too, because why would I want to be a kid? I mean, I literally just turned into a teenager. Like, I'm <laughs> almost old enough to do all sorts of cool stuff at 18 and then even cooler stuff at 21. <sighs> Come on now. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, let's see what let's see what Wrath the One is up to. Probably blogging, vlogging, whatever, whatever that's called. All right. So we're going over to Wrath the One. Now, Raph, let's see here real fast here. Uh, right. Your nightmare was a Groundhog Day style time loop with no one else in it and no memories of any of the others. So what is this nightmare? What, what are you in a room? Or are you just in an empty Eon City? Or what, what's, what's, what's going on here, bud? Uh, I feel like still in Eon City, but just like, uh, gets up in the morning, somehow lives alone. You know, this is a dream. Somehow lives alone, gets up, uh, every morning, same, same time, like 7 a.m., go to school for a few hours, leave, go to work for another few hours. And just, it's just the same thing where Every day he stops at the corner and gets a coffee. And when he leaves school, he always says hi to the, uh, you know, the same friend heading off. And it's just, the, it's just the same routine every day, but just, just not realizing it. And I feel like to make it a little creepy, people are slowly disappearing every day. Where you know he goes get a coffee and it's, it's kind of just sitting there. So he's like, oh okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Friend's not there when he waves to say hello. Still okay. does it out of habit. <laughs> Roll me and assess the situation. So that's rolling plus superior. And let's see how long it'll take you to figure out that something is very wrong. My superior is not good. Yeah, that, that makes sense. 
<clears throat> All right, so that's a miss. So it's going to take a bit. Um, you know, you know how the theory is that in Groundhog's Day, like Bill Murray's character went through like a thousand years or something like that of mm-hmm. the dream time. Um, that's where we're heading. Like this movie is going. <laughs> It's going to take a minute. like, And I feel like because of that role, what it is is that the dream started normal. The day started normal. All the people were there. All the people that you were used to see there. And just every day, someone else is gone. Someone else that you interact with. So eventually, the whole school is empty. Eventually, there is no one else on the streets. Eventually, and like this is clearly thousands of iterations of this day have gone by until you finally you reach for the coffee the coffee's still there but no one else is because you're used to like you used to get like shouldered out of the way by the next impatient businessman in line who has very important wall street deals to do it didn't happen and so finally you like look around the coffee shop's empty you walk outside the streets are empty you know that moment from 28 days later when he leaves the hospital it's that it's that except you're not in a hospital gown how long It's probably what Raph is asking himself. Because in real life, he has memory issues to begin with. So kind of just in this dream, his first kind of question is probably just like asking himself how long. Like what's going on? (laughs) And when, when does Raph start to question himself on this is when when does he get that realization that not only is he alone in this city he doesn't even remember people he doesn't remember the friend that he used to wave to doesn't remember the kids in his class doesn't remember the people that he lives with in the clock tower i think uh, i think soon after how long you know kind of just walking down the street to you know, head towards school because it's just a regular sort of thing where it's just like, uh, <laughs> so the uh, name of the school is um, I'm friends with I live um, my mother's name And how long does it take you to remember your channel name? My channel. <laughs> uh, all right, I, sh- I uh, huh, I, sh- I, sh- I stream. Um, what's uh okay. What's what's the password? <laughs> what even is the website? I mean, Fixer. Uh, <laughs> ah, yes, Fixer. <laughs> that pulls up a legally distinct web page from Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a uh, Home Depot gear. I think you. I, I think there's a chance he remembers the name because it's probably just his hero name. But like, can't remember what he streamed on, and if he even if he could, what's the what's the password there? Okay. So let's say. Hmm. 
what what is going to be kind of the final nail in the terror level for Raph? What is that thing where where he kind of gets it a little bit that he knows he is Not that he knows he's in a nightmare, but that he knows that this is the worst scenario kind of deal. I think uh, I think maybe he flashes back to a, a real day where uh, perhaps other minds were prevailing and, uh, you know, kind of woke up in the fugue state sort of a <laughs> fugue state sort of state <laughs> if that makes sense it kind of just wandered from the uh the watchtower and kind of came back to self sitting in, like the middle of the park wondering uh what the hell am i doing here <laughs> and it's just like a sickeningly familiar real sensation <laughs> that it's way too close to home yep and so with that depressing image of of Raph kind of just sitting by himself in a park, an empty park in an empty city in, as far as he knows, an empty world, the vision fades out again and Nightshade is relaxing on her throne, just smug. Just, hmm. That one would probably bother me too. Uh is really depressing. Like, whoa. Holy shit. It came from his mind, Philip. Um, wow. Yeah, that that was like wow. That was like watching that movie Looper and that and that uh what was that other movie with I can't remember. That was like watching Looper but backwards. I uh, it was really confusing. Who do you want to see next? Uh, Only two that you haven't looked in on yet. Uh, hmm. Let's see what uh, AFK is up to. All right. So here's the here's the question: Does Stone Strike just say that? Or does he try to rattle off the entire string of letters? Uh, uh, this is mostly for my amusement, really. I just want to see which one Philip's going to try to do. Uh, It'll work. It's all uh, mental powered anyways. All right. uh, okay, hold on. Let me see. A, uh, AFK WTF BBQ uh, <laughs> IIRC. Nightshade is just like looking at you with her head to one side. It's like, yeah, I don't get it either. But the alien, <laughs> right? That's and the just one. Like, does this number with her hand, and the the image doesn't like fade in. It just snaps into focus, and she's like, "Not, I'm not bothering with theatrics on this right now. I've got to figure out that name. I got to <laughs> figure out what's going on." IDK. You told me at the end of the last session that your nightmare is that you can no longer hear with either your ears or your mind. And if somehow you do manage to hear something, you'll die from it. You managed <laughs> to put a couple of really terrifying monsters into a box on this one. I'm impressed. Oh, I am. Um... I didn't remember this until you just said this because then I was like, oh, it's like that movie Bird Box or something like that, but it's not that. It's Cause... like Bird Box or Quiet Place, but not at all. Right. Uh, okay, now I remember this. All right. And so the other trick to this is that it's not just that you have to, that you, for your own sake, can't hear. It's that you're in a really high tense situation with all of your friends, but you can't hear them at all. And they're starting to get annoyed with you about it. 
That doesn't really seem different from any other time. You can't hear them. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm frustrated and, and angry, but they all seem annoyed with me. So that seems pretty normal and everything <laughs> seems pretty normal right now. So this is going to be more of a journey of self-discovery, <laughs> really, for IDK, huh? Maybe. <laughs> so uh, y'all are in a mall. You know this is a high tent situation. You were told. Uh, is it Star, black? Star and Margot were very clear. This is important. We have to get you new outfits. Oh, this is even more intense. Somehow they bribed the guys into coming along. You're having to brave a human mall with teenagers on a Saturday and you can't hear anything. Well, I don't know, like not being able to hear in a mall, a crowded mall on a Saturday with teenagers, that's kind of a plus. I mean, in the real world, yeah, that sounds great. That's why I wear headphones when I go out in the world ever. But right. <laughs> it's, but I don't know. It's, it's kind of, can I hear myself think? Oh, that's a really interesting question. You don't, you said that you can't hear anything. Right. So I can't hear Maybe. myself. How am I thinking? That's a real good question. Are you trying to thinking in pictures? Is your brain trying to kill you? Like Maybe. I feel like this is gonna be the most surreal of all the dreams. <laughs> like really just not not gonna be this is gonna be the yellow submarine movie, uh, but in <laughs> nightmare dream form. Uh <laughs> Pink Floyd the Wall. Yeah. Oh, or uh, heavy traffic. That was a movie. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess. It... Sorry, I got attacked by a cat. Um, a literal cat. Um, cat versus cat. <laughs> right. Um. <laughs> like, the, I don't the cat thinks the proceed. plot of this nightmare is contrived <laughs> i think i i think i um like i can still see so i think i'm gonna pretend like everything's normal and i'm, I'm just going to smile and nod okay roll me roll me and assess the situation uh so that should be plus plus superior um I, I want, oh boy, I will, I will, this is going to be partially to see if you can figure out at what point they lose their, they're starting to get, to catch on. And also if you can figure out what's hunting you. Oh boy. All right. So oh. 12 is a full hit probably one of the best numbers you can roll in the game so i just i just realized i have a loophole oh good Tell because me my uh like my telepathy isn't or like my my like what is it hive mind it's not just audio it, it's also visual mm -hmm. like i can see other people's thoughts that's true so we're gonna do a little bit of an evolution here aren't we a little bit that's so, so how is IDK figuring out this mental loophole in her own superpowers? Um, I think they are, um, I think they might try to like project an image of themselves in someone else's mind, like pantomiming. Okay. Like. I'm going to project the image of a, a mime, a literal mime, into, um, let's try Stone Strike's head. Interesting. Because um, I'm assuming S Stone Strike would be in, in this situation, right? Uh, your, whole, your whole group of super friends is there. All right. 
Um, I'm going to do that. Is there any way I could see the image of Margot's mom as a German sausage, indicating that she's the worst? Like sausage party style? <sighs> I I mean, the movie was terrible. Can I can I break yes. your game right now? <laughs> You can you can absolutely do that. Um, I have a question for you, though, IDK. I yeah. have a question. I have a very, very interesting and important question. Does IDK know that she's dreaming? That they're dreaming? Um, I think, so I have ADD. And I have a lot of, like, moments where I'm just, like, my brain like my my focus and like what's going on in my brain is like switching channels but i know when things when other people are switching channels faster than i am and i also know when my mom's switching the channels too much on the okay. actual tv um i feel like that's kind of how i i would perceive this new situation like the the, the channel just changed really fast and that okay. doesn't make sense. And we just came from a dream. Are we doing this again? Was the last one a dream? Like, which, like, I, at this point, I think. Okay. Okay. That gives me enough to work on, to work with here. I want you to roll me 1d6. Just 1d6, no modifiers, straight up and down. More or less a luck roll. Okay. Cool. That tells me what I need to know. Um, Stone Strike. Yes. In the throne room, you're standing there watching IDK's horror flick happen in front of you. And all of a sudden, for just like a second, in your mind, you get this very clear picture of someone you don't know as a German sausage. <laughs> and then it's gone. I'm just not even, I'm just gonna like write that off as, as a, as a it's been a real stressful day. I mean, who knows what you ate <laughs> yeah. for lunch? Stress. Like, yeah. yeah. That's okay. It. Stress. So, <laughs> IDK, in your dream, the, the stone strike in your, in the mall with IDK, you. AFK. I thought it was AFK. I don't know how I ended up tuning into this person. <laughs> It's, it's both. I legit in real life thought it was AFK. <laughs> oh, it, that is part of it. I just, oh. for some reason, I, me, Matt, latched onto the IDK part, and oh, that's how I've just been referring to them. Oh, it's the in all my part. notes. Um, so IDK, in in your dream mall, the the stone strike there with you looks at you. His mouth moves. And of course, you don't hear anything. And the person right next to him also says something. And suddenly, Stone Strike is gone. There was like a blur of motion, and something hit Stone Strike. And all five of your other friends still standing around are screaming and pointing and like Aram and Raph are running and when you all catch up stone strike is very dead and dead. there are weird footprints dead dead very dead in a crowded mall and no one saw it oh lots of people saw it what is oh well oh well But Can I didn't... try and open my mouth and make sound? Sure. To see if other people react to that? Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, whoever you're closest to, pick one of your friends that you're standing right next to, and they will be able to hear you. Hey, Star. And she turns and looks at you. I can't hear. Her mouth moves. I can't hear that. That was kind of a thing. Um, 
what's going on? Mouth moves, she's pointing. This is incredibly helpful. Um, <laughs> can I, can I try and, um, like see Star's memory of the thing? Yes. Um, you're going to roll plus freak for me to unleash your powers. Okay. That's neat. Okay. That's a good solid hit. Um, so you can see you can see Star's memory of what she saw. And she was not like fully paying attention to Stone Strike or anything as y'all were walking along. Um, she was talking with Margo, talking with you a little bit, and or talking at you, I guess. <laughs> um, but what she saw was a big, a big kind of furry shape that just like had Stone Strike in what may have been a mouth and like jumped over to a part of the mall and then like comedic very bad horror movie blood spray huh now like i'm gonna take a second to wonder whether or not that like comedic blood spray is is a product of of this possible dream because at this point i don't think i know which one's the real world and which one isn't um or if that's just how star remembers things like we we make things a little bit more uh, funny or palatable or cartoonish when they're kind of horrifying. Fair. Um, Do you want to try to figure it all out? Oh, it was Twilight. This is this is uh, this is Jacob. I mean. If that's where your brain goes, we can certainly play off of this direction, sure. Uh, no, um, no, I want to figure out, like, I think. All right. Uh, assess the situation for me one more time. Sure. And this is going to be, this is going to be a bigger, wider assess than just what you're. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So you hit, you got it. You got it. You're not going to get all of it yet, but what you're going to get enough of is an order of operations reminder here. PEMDAS? You projected an image into Stone Strike's mind. Stone Strike said something, someone else said something, and Stone Strike went away. In other words... I'm going to tackle... I'm going to tackle Star... Okay. And just try to like protect and just like shout protect. And the dream fades out from there and Nightshade is just like, don't take this the wrong way, Philip, but your friends are an odd bunch. <laughs> are you? Yeah, that one isn't from Earth. I don't think so. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. That could explain that one. And Star is just huh. kind of kind of really into s snacks and kicking ass with random objects. Yeah, but yeah, they're all strange. Okay, yeah. I, There's yeah. Raph one more really to check on. That channel. Anyway, all right. Yeah, sorry. One more to check on. Do you want right, to see yeah. them all? Yeah, let's see what they're up to. All right, say the name. Aram. And this one, because he is not with us tonight, but I do remember what his nightmare was. Uh, he is in an empty black room. Uh, if you've ever seen like a black box theater stage, very much picture that. There is somehow a spotlight on him. Uh, it's every kind of isolated dream sequence from every bad sci-fi original TV series from the early 2000s. Um, Aram is sitting there. He's kind of like 
sitting with his knees pulled up to his chest, arms around his knees, kind of rocking back and forth. And what takes you a while to notice is that the, the darkness around him, around them is all shadow monsters that are moving and striking at the cone of light that they're in trying to get to Aram. And as you kind of like zoom in on this nightmare, you can see that Aram is, is trying to like, they're muttering things over and over, trying to gain control of the shadows and not being able to at all. And we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more of these nightmare adventures from our super teens. See y'all back here real quick. Superhero edition of Are You Afraid of the Dark?
And we are we are back with more of uh, everyone's favorite super teens and their personal handcrafted bespoke nightmares. Uh, we are going to fly right back into the nightmares and catch up with what everyone's doing. Um, so we're going to start with Margo once again. Margo, you have been hacking away. You have been trying to find things. You are trying to destroy this terminal. Everything you do seems to just make things worse for your friends. You have one more of the three options left. So did you use a, which one do you still have left? The decreased danger or the reset? I think I have both left. I don't think I used either one. I think I only used the pause. Okay. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Then let's catch up with, with what's going on. You have been trying to wreck this computer. Just trying everything to wreck this computer. Well, I say that. You've been trying almost everything to wreck this computer, I imagine. Have you really cut loose yet? So I think that Hacktivist is going to experience her moment of truth. And she is going to decide that she's not playing by anybody's rules, including her mother's. And what she is going to do is walk over to the glass rooms, containers, and try to shatter them with her electrokinesis to release her friends. I love this. You do not have to roll. Moment of truth time. Uh, You're going to show off what you can do. I want you to describe this moment. All right, so Margot is at the computer. She's trying everything. She's just running into like brick wall after brick wall. Her mom's been doing this longer. Her mom's better at this than she is. And as she gets angrier and angrier, she suddenly realizes she's been playing into her mother's hands this entire time, doing exactly what her mom wants to do, like a good daughter, um and she wants to shatter the glass and she wants to fry that intercom so she steps away from the computer and her hands form into fists and you see just small sparks start to come out of the ends and she looks over slowly at the glass at her friends inside and as she marches over more and more electricity gathers around her and she almost but not quite touches the glass sticks both of her hands out and electricity just bursts forth, racing along. It's because she's got it under control. So it's just racing along the surface of the glass until it's virtually surrounded and it shatters and collapses to the ground. As it does that, the dreamscape around you falls away too. And you like sit upright and you're on the roof of a building with four of your friends around you. You're back in Neon City. You can see the green cloud of magical whatever rolling around beneath you. But you're awake. And you're a little bit different now. There's, there's, some, there's some lightning kind of running over your fingertips a little bit. And your mom... just kind of teleports is probably the best description of what this is in front of you. You can, because of your new like electrokinesis, you're like you're really engaging in the electrokinesis in this moment. You know that this is really her. Like you can feel the electro rhythms of her heartbeat and everything. You can like feel the electricity and the neurons firing. You know, this is your mom. And she just looks at you. And she just smiles. Oh, man. <laughs> hacktivist is going to look at her and because she's hacktivist right now. And she's going to say, get out of my face before I hurt you. I want you to pick the thing that your mom is going to say to hacktivist right now. What is, what is she going to say to her daughter who has just like embraced the power, come into her own, made her own choices, 
didn't give in. What does hacktivist's mom say to that? She's going to look at hacktivist still smiling and say, you think you're in control right now. You think you made your own choices, but you did exactly what I wanted you to do. And you fully embraced yourself. And one of these days, you're going to thank me for this. And when you come back, I will welcome you in your place by my side. Perfection. She teleports away. An activist just kind of, oh, and we're going to jump over to, and we're going to jump back over to Star. Um, for the audience who is not aware of what's been going on in the chats, um, I changed Star's role to a 12. And I gave Nikki a choice. So, Nikki, what can Star do now? Because uh, Star kind of leveled up here. Um, can I, like, describe it, like, what was happening in a dream? Absolutely. Okay, so she's slashing at this black hole dude with the chainsaw, and um, nothing's happening, and she's freaking out, and she slashes at it again, and then she just kind of stops for a second, and she just looks a little bit defeated, and then she realizes that she can do this, and her shoes get little jets out of them, and they float up, and the, um, she lifts the chainsaw, and it looks a little bit different. It's still a chainsaw, but it um, it can shoot out other chainsaws. <laughs> <laughs> she holds it up at him. Perfect. And, that is the best thing. And it's like, I'm going to get you with my reverse gravity <laughs> quantum blades. And she shoots them at him. They dig into, into Black Hole, rip him apart, and the dream falls apart with it. And unlike Hacktivist, who like sat up suddenly, when Star pops out of the dream, the camera was off of her for a minute. And then when it looked back over, she is standing up on the roof with these jet boots still on. <laughs> with this chainsaw in her hands, the chainsaw, the boots, they're all a little bit opaque. And as she's realizing that she's out of the dream, they kind of fade a little bit and she settles back down. Uh, Star can now use dream powers in the real world somehow. Cool. <laughs> um. And um, Hacktivist is the only one that's awake. Hacktivist is the only other one that's awake so far. I'm just going to say, I've got a chainsaw that shoots chainsaws. <laughs> Hacktivist is <laughs> like sparkling and crackling. And she's like, I got this. Can I electrify your chainsaws? Yes. While y'all are uh, playing around with what your new level ups can do, let's hop back over to Wrath, the one. Um, hey, bud. Hi. How, how long have you been? How many days have you been sitting in this park all alone over and over again? <laughs> After the time that's already passed. How many more days are you just suffering in this nightmare of your own devising. You, you ever seen Doctor Who? Yes. You, you remember that, that episode of Heaven Sent? Yeah, y yes. I, I, hope so. I hope so. It's, it's very okay. good. It's yes, fantastic. go on. This is uh, <laughs> this is Raph's this is Heaven Sent except it's, it's just entirely hell. It's it's actually just just hell. <laughs> so I think it's a good while. I don't know how much time has passed already, but it's you know sitting all alone in this park 
for the, like another hundred days. There is a tree that you've been sitting under and now its entire trunk is just covered in hash marks <laughs> of you counting all the repetitions and it just, it covers the trunk now. And this day, you're sitting there. You've carved your, your notch. You're running out of trunk space. Mm. And you hear a voice behind you. I would like you to, to pull up your character page real fast and read, read that moment of truth for me. Okay. All right. Moment of truth. Ah, the, the prickly, tingling fear of your doom always in your head. It holds you back most of the time. But right here, right now, gives you the confidence to do anything. After all, what's the worst that could happen? Is it worse than your doom? Do impossible things. Do anything. But mark a doom sign after you're finished. The voice behind you is that same person that you saw in the last dream who lured you to the comic store, who showed you that lair underground near your home. He squats down on the grass in front of you. He, he, he looks old. Like the eyes, the eyes are ancient and pretty, pretty evil looking. He just looks at you and just goes, neither of us live if you keep reveling in your pain. He holds out his hand to you and says, we both know I'm going to win this fight eventually. But we can get out of this together and we can go get the person who did this to us. And he's just holding out his hand. I can't let you out. I can't do it. I'm content to be a passenger on this trip. But if you die here, I die with you. And I'm not dying today. Let me help you. I think uh, it's been, you know, Raph, despite it, him just being a quote unquote asleep, so so much time has passed. I think that he's just, it's got a little crazy. <laughs> Driven him a little crazy. I think it's, it's, it's just too much. For the first time, I think he's, I think he's seeing eye to eye with this passenger, this unwanted passenger. And right. so I think as uh, as they're standing there in the park, Raph starts to uh, to burn and call upon that extra layer of power that previously did not know he had. Uh so I have to roll for burn, but this yes. is this yes, is, please. Yeah, I have no conditions marked, so just a two d six. Uh, yeah, it's just two d six. I can roll off the sheet. Oh, cool. Nine. Okay. That's uh. Let me pull up the Nova playbook real fast. Burn it up. There it is. Uh, all right. Okay. Um, I'm going to burn another one of my team points to bump that up to a full success as well. Uh, so you get to hold three burn. So you get to choose four of those. You get to choose your flares and spend them appropriately. Uh, we might we might modify this again later, but yes, right now 
you're going to hold three burn. Okay. And you can use those flares. Okay, flares. Let's uh, let's see here, huh? Okay. So I, I believe I chose three as I was meant to for. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, okay, I did choose three. So it seems a bit redundant, but I I chose constructs as Good. one of the one of the burns, and that's because when I spend two burns. I can animate something independently of myself and it can be up to the size of a person, which means Wrath is going to create a second Wrath that is a burning silhouette as the first part of this. And... Uh, you put out a tremendous display of your might. Spend one burn to awe an audience into silence, respect, and attention when you unleash your powers. <laughs> so let's just flavor this as, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll also do worship. So it'll be a burning portal opens and out okay. walks a burning silhouette. I shall aptly name Wrath the Second. All right, I love this. So Wrath the Second is now with you. Uh, you two are both radiating power like mad. <laughs> and your dream shatters. And you are standing on the rooftop with Star and Margot. Star and Hacktivist. Uh, Star and Hacktivist. There is Raf standing up now with a fiery silhouette of himself behind him that seems to be acting on its own. And y'all are both a little bit filled of a little bit of awe by this. You have a fire shadow. This is Raf the second. My new compatriot. Cool. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you did that one day. Mm. Yes, perhaps. If we get there. We'll get there. And I'm holding up my chainsaw when I say that. <laughs> yes, yes, you will. And now we're going to dive back into IDK's dream. Uh, so, I decay. Yeah. What's, uh, what's, uh, what's up? What's, what's up? up? You're, uh, you're protecting Dreamstar. Uh, yeah. What's, uh, what's going on? I think I'm, I'm looking around to see if the, the furry comes back. Nope. All right, then I, I kind of get up embarrassed and then I uh, I help Star up. Star's mouth and mouth is moving at you. I say, sorry. Also, still can't hear. <laughs> Just. She, she like holds up a finger, pulls out a backpack, pulls out a notebook and writes, think pic pictures? mind yeah i yeah i did that and uh i did that at at stone strike and he got eaten by whatever that was all capital letters underlined exclamations question marks what i did that to stone strike then he died you want to try it? I could I could show you like a really cool picture of a mime. Hey Star, does does Dream Star want to try this? Um, <laughs> not if um, Stone Strike got eaten by it. <laughs> so it starts. <laughs> no. 
Um, right. So I, uh, hmm. I, can I try and do it to some random passerby? Yes. Yes, you can. I will, I will do that at that point. Um, uh, just describe the, the general idea of the person in this crowd that you're going to do this to. Oh, he's a guy. He's really disheveled. He's following this group of teenage girls around, um, but they might not notice immediately. Um, and I get really like sketchy vibes off of him. Um, and so I just... I, I show him the image of a uh, of him getting caught. <laughs> okay. Being creepy. So you kind of um, like you, yeah. you send him that image and he kind of freezes in place for a second. Uh, you can kind of tell that a lot of people in the area are making noises. And as soon as he freezes something like blurs from the ceiling grabs him jumps back to the ceiling and then just comedically too much spray of blood over the crowd and people are now panicking and running and and i think i'm going to turn back to dream star and i'm going to see see i just did it to him although he was creepy and he probably deserved it also uh, are you real is this a real dream or is this real or is this a dream uh all of your dream friends that are still alive are panicking and looking around for whatever just ate some dude um i'm gonna draw a picture of the the cover of the um hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy <laughs> okay <laughs> That if if uh, you haven't read it or you're not familiar, it just says "Don't panic" on it. Um. Yeah. Um. What does anybody stop panicking? Uh, your friends more or less do. They're still kind of looking around for what killed their friend and some random guy, uh, but they're kind of huddled up around you now. Um. I guess I'm kind of stuck using my, my face mouth uh, and not getting any real response. See, well, I can receive images because I received an image from, from Star, and that's when I, I uh, tackled Star. Uh-huh. Um, and then this is just me. I guess this is just my character narrating out loud trying to figure this out um is do you think it's a spider like a giant spider um it's a giant cat it's a giant cat it's a giant cat Aww. it's the one thing you haven't been able to get yet it's haunting you oh uh, I'm going to fly up and see if I can, like, find it in the ceiling. Uh, you've seen it twice now. Uh, roll me um, roll me the assess the situation and get a plus one bonus to it because you've seen it moving. Hey. All right. It takes a second. Um, but eventually you see it kind of like prowling on like the upper level of the, of the mall. Can I project an image of me hugging it into its mind? It freezes. It's just kind of like. It's not sure what to do with this. This was not part of what it was made for. Oh, uh, can I try and tackle it? Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, like love? Attack it with love. Um, yes. Roll plus danger for me. <laughs> <laughs> this goes well. 
you dive at it to tackle it and it just kind of like bounces away from your tackle uh and then it tries to tackle you back because it's a cat um i extend my arms and I, I just let it happen. Like, I'm like, here, kitty, kitty. But I'm going to try and, like, use, yeah, like, um, if I if I make too much of those noises, though, my cat is going to. Is actually going to show up? Yeah. Um, I've got three of them, too, so they might all show up at once. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um. So yes. don't do so that at all. It's gonna attack like attack me. I think. Can I use like, you know, the basic understanding of physics of like. Try to like take the the hit, but let it, like, use it against it. I think that's kind of like one of the, the ideas of some of the martial arts. Yeah, is kind of like to use a person's like an attacker's power against them. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm going to try to do that. Like, I'm not just going to, like, you know, accept claws in my face. I'm going to try and, like, hug it okay. and, like, tumble with it. Yeah. Y'all are... You're, you're moving with the cat. The cat is moving with you. Y'all are a uh, beautiful and violent dance on the upper balcony. Can I, uh, can I roll for... Um, I was going to say Nancy Kerrigan, but that probably isn't the uh, way to go. <laughs> um, uh, what what would you can certainly roll? Uh, what what kind of outcome do you want from this? Like at the end of the roll, I want this to become funny. Like I want this to be like that's kind of how I, I deal with all my issues and all my, like the darkness in the world is I just like make it really funny. So I, I kind of like. It, this goes from like a grapple and a scrap to like act ice dancing. Okay. Like race. Okay. Um, just, Maybe like unleash my powers. Yeah. yeah I, think well, I might try to be, um, I think I might try to be grappling with controlling this cat's mind while I'm, um, also trying to physically control the cat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so roll plus freak. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, y'all, um, eventually y'all are both like standing up and you're just like almost ballroom dancing with the cat for a second. Then y'all are doing like pairs figure skating for a second. Uh, <laughs> there's a brief scene where everyone in the mall is doing the Scooby-Doo hallway chase. Uh <laughs> out of nowhere <laughs> and at the end of it all at the end of it all you are left uh sitting on like a bit of brickwork in the mall it's got like some plants behind you and the cat has its head in your lap and is like shoving its head under your hand oh i got a kitty i hope that this is a dream <laughs> That's a real question, isn't it? Isn't it? That's kind of the thing. Hey, hey, IDK? Yeah? Why are you having a nightmare about a murder cat that only hunts when you hear something or when you pass that drug on to someone else? How how you doing, IDK? Are you okay with where you're at in life? Are you okay with your no, powers? I like this. Just it's. I feel like it's it's way too over the top. Um. Like I, like it seems like whenever I do get a cat, um, it's too good to be true. Um. So I think I've kind of like accepted that this is this. This isn't the real reality, but I'm not quite sure when it's going to end or what, what to do to get out of it. And I'm kind of tired. So I'm just going to like sit here with the cat. Okay. 
Um, unlike everyone else's dream where they kind of just shattered of it, you you accepted that this is not normal. So you you're not like brute forcing your way out of whatever magic is doing. You're you're doing exactly what you did with the cat. You're rolling yeah. with the punch. You're taking the hit. You're redirecting. Um, roll me another plus superior for an assess the situation real fast. All right. Okay. Um, you you kind of nod off in the mall. And when you open your eyes again, you're on top of the roof. And three of your friends are standing up. Uh, activist has like lightning kind of arcing between her fingers. Uh, Star has some new boots and a chainsaw. Uh, Raph has a fiery, shadowy version of himself standing next to him. And you immediately just like, whoa. And you have two sensations on waking up before you really say anything. One, you get this like mental feeling of like a thread running from your mind out to that big tree in the harbor. All right. You were able, because you were like rolling with the magic a little bit there because you rolled with the punches like that. You got a trace on where it's coming from. You know where to go next. You don't know who to punch when you get there, but you know where to go next. And the second thing you get is the feeling of a cold nose, like pushing against your hand. But when you like move your hand over there, you don't really feel anything. Can I look at what's trying to... Nothing there. Well, maybe a little bit of a blur. Oh, so there's so there's this town south of Boston called Braintree. Oh, oh dear. And uh, I was gonna make some kind of reference, but it doesn't. It won't make sense because I'm the only one from like the Boston area. Um, but I, I think I'm just gonna point to the tree and I'm gonna say, I think it's coming from over there. And I think, I think that tree, I'm going to turn to Star and I say, I think that tree needs a chainsaw. And we're going to and pop some fire. And we're going to pop over from this little reunion back to Stone Strike. And Nightshade is no longer just lounging on the throne. She's just kind of, she's kind of like sitting up and she's not looking pleased. And the image in the basin switches over to Aram. And they're still very much trapped. And she looks at you and just goes, I bet you think your friends are so clever, don't you? Uh, never said anything like that. I mean, hacktivists, definitely very clever. The rest of them are just kind of flying by the seat of their pants like me. So, now it's my turn to ask you a question, okay? So, I have a feeling you know where they're at, so why don't you tell me before I wreck your stupid crown over your stupid face? All right? I have no problem doing that. You just, didn't see what I did to that damn plane. She just looks at you, and for a moment, it's just like fury. Fury all over her face. And then she, like, <laughs> smiles and settles back on the throne. She just goes, interesting. What's interesting? You say interesting a lot. You find things very interesting, apparently. I'll make you a deal, Philip. Tired of making deals with you. I'm making demands now. Where are my friends? I'll tell you where they are if you agree to bring them back to me. Or, and behind you, this swirling portal of green fog opens. 
or I'll put you in the room with Aram and let the two of you sort out the shadows. I don't have time for a disobedient son, Philip. Not in, in my future. Put me in the room. Two tree branches swing down and slap you into the room, and that's where we're going to end. All right. <laughs> fight my way out of that room <laughs> and then i'll bring my friends back for sure <laughs> so um yes that is going to be where we wrap up for this episode uh thank y'all so much for the raid that was awesome i'm sorry y'all came at the at the tail end uh we'll be back next friday though uh with aram and philip and stone strike trying to escape from a nightmare and the rest of their friends um i guess coming to rescue them maybe we'll see we'll see how this all plays out uh thank you all so much for watching school days with us for tuning in for having fun here with us tonight uh, i hope you all enjoyed the nightmare episode um boy i swear this was all meant to happen around uh, around uh, halloween in a not 2020 world but uh we're going to start with nikki uh what was your favorite part where can we find you next and anything else you'd like to share or promote um i'm just having trouble coming up with favorite part because it was fun um i think i like the mall scenes just <laughs> Just um, with IDK, just kind of trying to figure out how to communicate with everyone and they're just going on with the scene. Awesome. And I like, of course, Star getting to actually not, she's been kind of hanging back the whole time. So it's nice for her to actually not hold back. If that yes. makes sense. Yeah, that was, that was great. And, uh, you definitely took that nightmare in a way I was not expecting. <laughs> it was fun. Um, and next I am on the action fiction channel on Sunday for Drain the Rich. I, I forgot what time it is on, like 7.30 or 8 Eastern, I think. And on Monday for um, another game and this has been a lot of fun. Thank you. Awesome. Mr. Parr, favorite part, where we can find you next and anything else you'd like to promote. Okay. Uh, favorite part, huh? Interesting. Uh, I loved a lot of this episode. Um, I, think the, I think the dreams just as a whole take the cake for me. Uh, and also torturing my character because I, I don't know I must be a sadist <laughs> but um, it's it was all very very good enjoyed it a lot uh, as for you can find me next you can always find me on my twitch channel which is Mr. Parr uh, and you can find me here next Friday uh, for both of the games, um, the S I'm in EST to MST. That's a, what it's two hours back. So I can't remember this time. But yeah, you can you <laughs> can, you can find me, you can find me Friday for both games, and <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Mr. Par Four E because someone took Mr. Par. And I'm very salty about it. Boo. But hey. Uh, yeah, that's me wrapped. All right. Kat, what was your favorite part? I liked... I liked a lot of it. I liked... I really liked the chainsaw that could shoot out their chainsaws. Um, I just like the chainsaw thing. I like. I In chat, I mentioned something about it being full of chainsaws um because I, I was just echoing something i heard in the commercial and then chainsaws actually happened and i was pretty excited about that um and 
yeah, I, I like that that's where that went. And um, I just really like chainsaws, I get. Anyway, <laughs> um, I really liked being able to project the image of someone's mom being a German sausage into Stone Strike's head. Um, and I don't know, I kind of felt, I felt like I was really funny this one. Like I, I'm not always funny. I always try to be, but I'm not always funny. I, I think I made some good hits this time. And uh, yeah, that's that's that. Um, I'm Kat, Kat N. Schrodinger, Kat Name Schrodinger, depending on where you're looking for me. Um, I play IDK and you can find me again next week for the penultimate episode of this. This, right? It's the penultimate? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just learned that word recently. Yep. I learned it from a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> That's cool. All right. And anything else to promote? Nope. That's that's me. All right. Leland, what was your favorite part? Uh, pretty much every part that I was in. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was a bad. That was totally a joke. I hate myself. Uh, yeah, my favorite part was definitely uh, the just slowly hearing um, the slasher film dream uh, develop into being like, you know, every other cheesy slasher film I've seen in my entire life, but like it just perfectly applied to this game. That was really good. <laughs> um, and I really like um, finding out the plot twist, at least for me about um, even my character, do, even though my character doesn't know. Well, I guess my character does know because he watched the dreams um, that wrath has something spooky living inside of him. So that's kind of cool. Um definitely some information i probably won't say anything about because my character's not one to run his mouth uh but yeah no all that was super good and uh as far as stuff to plug uh oh next wednesday on at 9 p.m central on twitch.tv slash uh attack trick it's like like the name patrick but with attack at the beginning instead of pat uh and no c at the end it's complicated i'm not on twitch uh help me out raven anyway uh yeah uh <laughs> so that's a fun game 9 p.m we'll have a lancers campaign going on um the art was done by uh raven the cover art and the overlay uh we've got um, some tokens done by another member of the black feather go community um Elana, uh, at Elana Knight, uh, aka Rue. We also have um, we also have at Agent Boss doing a bunch of art for it too. So a few people in the community in this exact, exact community are involved in it. It's, it's and and some other people are even playing in it. But yeah, it's it's really fun. The Lancer system is awesome. Come check it out. But yeah, it, it's called the Spare Brigade. So it just gives you an idea, of, you know, how defunct our team is. <laughs> Anyway, yep. And my, uh, okay, I already said my favorite parts. Also, <laughs> something else to promote uh, wear a mask. All right, cool. Thanks. Heck yeah. And Stace, what was your favorite part? I honestly just loved the format. Like, there were a lot of really cool moments. I liked how characters got to develop in different ways. I thought it was a very clever way to get it done and address the fact that Stone Strike's been missing. So, uh, obviously I'm partial to hacktivist development. I thought that was something that needed to happen and I wasn't sure how it was going to happen or even if it was going to happen by the end. So thanks for working that in. As far as things to promote for me, of course, you can find me on Twitter at Stace Windu. I'm also a cast member on a Numenera actual play podcast called Explorers Wanted, which drops every Wednesday. So check it out. It's on all the different podcast platforms. Thanks again, Matt. This was a wonderful session. Hey, thank you. Uh, and I am Matt, the GM of this awesome band of really cool super teens. Uh, we do have two more episodes left, the fourth and the 11th. Um, we're going to get right down to the nitty gritty of dealing with the big bad here. 
one way or another. Uh, so uh, my favorite part of all this was just how y'all rolled with the weirdness of this of this episode. Thank y'all so much for playing along and for having fun in your nightmares uh, and for letting and for giving me the ammunition to do that to your characters. Uh, that's always a delight for a GM to experience. Um, you can find me on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on twitch.tv slash jam game streams. Uh, that's where I stream over there. You can find me on Twitter at Matt Hoadley. Um, just picked up a couple of games in the Steam sale. And that means I'm going to be able to start playing Hades on my stream. And I'm super excited about that. Uh, even though I feel like I'm just at the tail end of the popularity curve on that, but whatever. I was just about uh, to say, oh, what's that game? I haven't heard anything about it in the last 14 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to play it too. <laughs> oh, it's already down to a 14 second gap. Oh no, I'm too Shit. late. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and I have a podcast called Hard Reboot where me and two friends take a public domain property and slap a fresh coat of paint on it. Uh, an episode will be dropping today or tomorrow, maybe Sunday. I don't know. It depends on how life goes. Uh, that is about Faust and we make a board game out of it somehow. I still am not sure how we pulled that off, but we did. Uh, so um, that's me. That's where you can find me, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, we will see you next week right back here. Thank you all so much for watching. Hey, thanks so much, Matt. That was fantastic. Uh, yeah, we're going to go on a raid here. Um, so the raid cries there in chat, uh, which is I have a chainsaw that shoots other chainsaws. And we're going to go raid Trooper SJP. Uh, if you're not already uh, following that channel, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. Um, and then, yeah, you can catch Blackfeather Guild back here again tomorrow at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern for the next episode of Animus of Sentis. Uh, it's going to be pretty great. So thanks again, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow.